Okay. Uh, Ken, I see Julie Urban, Jim Bach, Huber, David Shaw, Ken Potter, Lisa Hanairo, and Grace Wilkin Wilkinson. So we have six out of seven, we have a quorum. All right, good. And I will uh, start sharing my screen. You guys should see the agenda now. Yep. So Ken, you can take over. Okay, yeah, has, has, uh, has Warren, isn't stepping down, correct? So, so what's Warren hasn't said anything about it. So I move that we uh, elect Warren as uh, chair. Oh, is that appropriate? Do yeah. you think it'd be good to do a, to go around the group and- Oh, you wanna go around and do that? Sure. Okay. Yeah, before we- we'll do that first. I'll, I'll start out, yeah. Ken Potter, I've been here since uh, 1980 when I moved here, I've been on this committee I think I learned more in this committee about water issues than I learned anywhere else. And uh, I'm uh, very grateful that I had this opportunity. So my, my area is I'm, uh, I do a lot of surface water work and uh, not so much groundwater, but uh, more surface water. And uh, I uh, retired from UW Civil and Environmental Engineering uh, where I, uh, did a lot of a lot of work in a lot of a, I guess my specialty is uh, probability and statistics. So, uh, and which obviously is very relevant to uh, water issues. And, uh, so I think that's enough. Uh, so, who, who, how do you want to go around? Uh, well, I can't, how about Julie goes next? Hey. Um so yeah, I've been on the committee. I'm a newcomer. I've been on the committee for just a year now, I guess. And um, my experience is more where there's been a shortage of water. My water experience has been actually in New Mexico. So um, I'm sort of getting used to uh, new concepts where there's actually maybe too much water, <laughs> learning about flood control. So. Um, but I do spend a lot of time in the conservancy. So it's been interesting to learn about um, the water issues here in Middleton. Um, David Shaw, yeah. would you like to go next? Yeah. Sure. Um, David Shaw, I come from the uh, Park uh, Rec uh, Committee. Um, previously, I was the administrator clerk treasurer for the town of Middleton. Uh, and um, my degree is in construction administration, not particularly water related, but um, I have some knowledge of some of the concepts that are being discussed. Uh, Jim okay. is next on my screen. Okay, hi, uh, Jim Bachelber. I've been a member of the commission for, I can't, I don't know how many years, many years, not as long as Ken, but must be in the range of 15 or so. Uh, my background is uh, I was with uh, Wisconsin DNR for about 13 years during Water Resource Bureau, and then the rest of my career about uh, 30 some years as a storm, stormwater consultant. So, urban stormwater quality and quantity, uh, permit compliance, things like that. And the commission has worked with a lot of different city governments around the state as a consultant, and working with Middleton is. Uh, this is a great experience. And, and like I say, you learn a lot. Grace. Hi all, uh, I'm Grace Wilkinson. I am a, a assistant professor at the University of Wisconsin-Madison at the Center for Limnology. And so my research largely focuses um, also on surface waters um, in lakes, reservoirs, ponds, and some flowing water systems like streams. Um, so that's sort of the perspective that I'm bringing. I moved to Madison in 2020 um, and have been getting uh, research going here in the area on ponds like Strickers and Tiedemanns, which I spoke to this commission about a couple of months ago, for those of you that were here. And I'm looking forward to uh, learning and working with you all. Lisa. Hi, I'm Lisa Hanairo. I, this is my second meeting of the commission. I'm a new member uh, representing the Common Council. I was elected uh, to my first term representing District 6 on the north side of Middleton. Um, my background, I'm, I'm re 
I early retired, um, like so many of my peers during the pandemic, um, but my training was in public policy um, before that, a long time ago in geology. And uh, my area of focus has been uh, public policy related to radioactive waste management and then also uh, Great Lakes issues uh, in the last 10 years of my career. So um, lots of water, uh, <laughs> lots of water in the Great Lakes. I used to live in Sheboygan, just a couple blocks from Lake Michigan. And uh, I've been in Middleton for the past five years. I'm glad to be here. And I'll just add, uh, you know, Warren's absence. Uh, Warren is retired uh, scientist from USGS, and he uh, has served on this commission since the mid '70s. Uh, I think he had Kenny had you beat by a couple of years. Yeah, that's right. Um, okay. I guess Ken, we can. Yeah. Okay. Then. Uh, so. In terms of, uh, we have to elect a chair, correct? And uh, uh, somebody want to nominate Warren? Has Warren said anything about leaving? I don't think so, right? So hard to believe. Not to me. Well, oh, uh, Eric, he hasn't given you any. He doesn't say anything about not wanting him to continue on his chair. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah, he hasn't said he's he wants out. No. And I will nominate Warren Gebert as. Uh, Chair of the Water Resource Commission. You need I'll a second. second. Oh. Okay. Any discussion? Warren knows a lot about this stuff, so he's been at it a long time, and uh, he's certainly on top of it all. So uh, then, let's uh, go ahead and vote. All in favor? Say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. So we take care of that one. Hey, who was that second again, please? Well, you had three of us, so <laughs> take your pick. David was probably first. Yeah, okay, David, it is. All right, and uh, I'm uh, happy to continue to serve as vice chair as long as Warren stays around. Well, then I'll nominate you. <laughs> I'll okay. second that. Okay. This is Lisa. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Okay, it looks like uh, I'll be uh, vice chair then. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. So uh, the uh, next, next slide was minutes. Was so. Uh, so th this is a discussion of uh, uh, fees in lieu of for uh, development of uh, Pioneer's oh, Drive. No. Oh, no, oh. Not very Am I looking at the wrong thing? Yeah. You may be. Next item. Yeah, I want, something else came up. Yeah, okay. Oh, okay. Now we're down at um, minutes. Oh, yeah, we need to approve the minutes. Oh, yes. wow, sorry. I haven't done this in a long time, so... Uh, I don't know that I've ever taken them run this meeting. So, uh, okay, minutes. Is there a motion to accept the minutes of 518-2022? I will move to accept the minutes from 518-22. Is there a second? I'll second that. Okay, uh, any, any, anybody have any issues with the minutes? Okay. I, I did have just one question. Yeah. And I noticed that mm -hmm. in the items for the June meeting. Um, it mentions the zoning um, zoning ordinance review. I didn't see that on our agenda, though. Well, it still wasn't ready the last time I spoke with Mark Opitz. So this has actually okay. happened a few months now. Uh, I think hopefully we can do this in uh, uh, July. But it, okay. Last I heard, there was not a draft available for us to review. All right, thank you, Eric. And just a point of order, do you all usually, if a member was not present at the committee, was it not a member of the committee like myself when these minutes were taken to abstain from voting? I think that's up to you. I don't think that's required, okay. so yeah. 
That has been the practice on this uh, committee. General that, practice, uh, right? I don't yep. think okay. it's required. You had a clarification on that last month. <laughs> from that. Okay. Right. See, but I do have a question here. Um, just on those zoning ordinances, just for uh, background. Eric or other people from the engineering department, are you have you been involved in discussions with planning on some of these things that affect stormwater, or is this going to be your first crack at it also? We've made a few comments, Jim. <clears throat> yeah. And I know a few things were inserted uh, based okay. on our comments. Okay. I, I don't know if you've had some. Yeah, I haven't seen discussion. it yet either, really. Not in detail. Okay. okay, any other discussion? Okay, all in favor to uh, accept the minutes, say aye, please. Aye. 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 I'm abstaining. Abstaining, okay, one abstention. Any negative votes? I'm abstaining. Okay, two abstentions, yeah, okay. All right, so that passes. And the uh, next topic, you want to get that up? Uh, uh, whoops, Eric, hold yeah. on. Next topic is appointment of members to Stormwater Utility Board. Okay, and uh, right now we have uh, Warren, myself, and uh, Jim uh, on that. If anybody's interested in doing that, uh, if somebody really wants to be on it, I'd be willing to step aside. Otherwise, I'll stay on. Same, same here. Uh, the, the, the board usually meets a half hour before the commission does. So it's a, right. it's a Wednesday right. night meeting. Yeah. OK. I guess then uh, we'll go with what we got. Is there a motion there? Um, to, I'll make uh, that motion to reappoint the three of you. Okay, second, is there a second? I'll second that, this is Lisa. Okay, any any discussion? Okay, hearing none, all in favor say. Oh, well, go ahead. I just wanna ask a question, sorry, Ken, I'm gonna to draw no, a Go ahead. Eric, There's there will be a uh, uh, council member on this SWAB board, on the board, right? Correct, Emily, Emily Kuhn is representing finance. Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay, there's been a motion to uh, uh, keep Warren, myself, and uh, Jim on that roll. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay, that passes. Okay, now we're, uh, we have one member serves on the uh, Conservancy Land Committee. And uh, I was like, we, uh, is Dan Ramsey's, uh, Dan Ramsey's not on this committee anymore. Is that right? That's correct. And so we need to, yeah. Let me point out one more thing. Conservancy Land Committee is meeting tonight at seven. Uh, so whoever we appoint should probably hop over to that meeting at seven. <laughs> <laughs> and and since I'm on the on the committee already, I will be hopping over as well. Oh, that'd be great. Oh, well, can you serve that role, David? As yeah, both? can he do? I, no, don't I don't think, think so. He do. I don't think so. Then uh, they'd be short a member, essentially. Right. Right. Okay. Then uh, is there a motion to appoint David? No, no, you can't. Board? I don't can't. think oh, you no. can. We could. What's that? I I can't be a serving too well. Oh, you can't do it. I'm sorry. Uh, my hearing's not that great. All right. So we got to get somebody else. Oh, okay. Anybody uh, interested in that? Oh, man, we're buying here. <laughs> fun, fun group. Come on. Somebody kind of has got to step forward here. Someone might nominate you if you don't want to. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to just gonna close my eyes and then touch the screen and see where it comes out. Uh, Julie, you mentioned the, your time spent in the conservancy. Do you, do you have any appetite? My, I didn't 
Oh, well, yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so can we actually have two people from this commission? Oh, yeah. Well, I'm not. Um, I'm not on this from I'm from Parks and Rec. He's not right. Oh, that, okay. That's my connection to right. to yeah, the Conservancy yeah. lands, not through this. Uh, Julie? I suppose. Reluctantly. Okay. All right. Enthusiasm is overwhelming. So is that point of order? Like yeah. maybe this is is it possible for like someone to share that appointment, like two people from this committee, if there needs to be an every other? Or is that not productive for the committee or not allowed? Well, I don't know, Eric. What, uh, it's probably, what do you think, Eric? Yeah. Well, Lisa, you might have more to say about this. Yeah, I, I, I've I, read that ordinance several times and I, I don't think that would be allowed. Yeah, that's my guess. Yeah. So Grace, if you would like it, you're welcome to it. It would probably make none of the meetings. <laughs> I can barely make it work for this committee. I know, um, I don't so like I would not the be a thought very, of doing two I, separate yeah. evenings. Yeah, I wouldn't contribute much to that committee at all and wouldn't even decorum. Well, I'll, I'll second Julie's nomination of herself. <laughs> okay, all right, we got a second. All right, uh, any more discussion? But, but I did not nominate myself. I don't want that to go down. In the oh, okay, oh, well, I, mean, <laughs> I tried, I, I tried. <laughs> oh, I will not, if nobody else says, I will nominate Julie for the uh, role of CLC liaison. All right, and I'll second that. Okay, all right. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Any abstentions? So it's unanimous. Do appointments have to, just as a, a point of order, do appointments have to be annual? What was that, Grace? What did you our, say our appointment, like does Julie have to serve for a whole year or? Yeah, these are for a year. Okay. Yeah. I mean, if I guess if someone can quit, but okay. but Julie could quit at any point. This is not. Uh, yeah, right. Is, right. We we don't have you. Uh, yeah. So Grace, so. if you want to take over after six months, I could. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking. I would have <laughs> a lot more flexibility in the winter and spring to incorporate that into my schedule. So Julie, maybe we can discuss. Yeah, why don't right. you discuss that? Yeah. Is that, is that agreeable? Is that something that's not kosher, oh. Eric? I mean, is that? Well, no, I think that we might upon? fly. Uh, yeah. Lisa, you yeah, have thoughts I, on that? Yeah, I, I, having two would be a problem, but having one at a time and you know, right. switching, I don't see that being a problem. And I, I really want to thank Julie for stepping up. I, I promised myself, I actually have a note in, in the agenda to myself saying, don't speak up <laughs> because, <laughs> because I am already on, you know, four committees plus the council and yeah, conservancy lands is so important to me. And I was glad to hear that, um, that you love the conservancy as well. And uh, mm. I thank you very much for stepping up. Okay, I, I don't think we need a motion. I mean, just wait until uh, you resign and then, <clears throat> handle that at that time does that make sense eric it does sure Seems to me grace, that's we can talk proper way to do this yeah right. okay okay so uh did we vote i forgot uh have we voted yet no we did yeah we, we did, did vote okay, yeah. yeah yeah okay right all right my memory's uh, not the greatest uh, okay so uh, Eric, you want to uh, yeah. give some background on number six here? So this, this next item is talking about the results of, of our meeting with DNR and ends up with a proposed contract amendment for our consultant that did the flood mapping EOR. Um, with the rescheduling of this meeting EOR, could not attend. So I'm going to take a crack at uh, trying to explain this well enough for everybody. Um, I think I'd like to summarize a few things, especially for the new folks uh, and start there. So, you know, we had the big flood in 2018. 
um, and we hired EOR, or formerly Mars, Montgomery Associates EOR to model and remap the floodplain for the Pheasant Branch Corridor, which is the vast majority of the city. And that, you know, it, it included the South Fork, the North Fork, and just a little bit downstream of Century or a little bit upstream of the Conservancy uh, proper. After that work was completed, uh, we asked EOR also to look at some different floodplain or reduction or mitigation strategies. Uh, most of those strategies, there were some good ones that involved uh, building detention basins on the North Fork and some agricultural land. Uh, we haven't gotten much interest from the landowners in that. Uh, we looked at, <clears throat> excuse me, expanding storage within some of our existing ponds. And some of those are promising to some extent and still on the table. Uh, and they also looked at increasing conveyance along the South Fork, kind of in between Highway 14 and Confluence Pond. Um, since I've come here, and for you new folks, I should say I've only been here for 14 months myself. Um, prior to that, I worked for a consulting firm and we did a lot of work, a lot of water resources work for the city of Middleton you know, so I was involved from the other side. And we actually proposed on this flood mapping effort, but uh, we were not hired for it. <clears throat> Anyways, since I've been here, read the studies, I looked at a few other options, a few other flood reduction scenarios. And we talked about this at Water Resources, I think last December. Um, you know, and so this is, uh, that's part of EOR's contract amendment is to look at these additional scenarios that I've identified. And we can, we can go into those in detail later. Um, right now, let me try to summarize floodplain modeling techniques a little bit. Um, one of the kind of decision points I outlined in this agenda item was, you know, which, which modeling technique do we go with or combination of that. Um, so traditionally, and I'm gonna share something here. Let's see if you guys can see this. Traditionally, floodplain maps have been made, you know, under a steady state condition. You take a constant flow rate and you run it through the geometry of the stream or the channel, and you determine how much space or how much cross-sectional area you need to pass that flow. And then the floodplain gets split into two parts, the floodway and the flood fringe. You know, and the flood fringe is you can think of as a backwater or a still water. And, you know, the water's not moving in here. So you really don't need this area to convey the flow. And if you looked at the guts of the model, you know, you could really set a vertical wall right along the end of the edge of the floodway and you know, fill it up with earth or some kind of blockage and it won't affect the flood elevation. And that's kind of the definition of the floodway versus the flood fringe. So, you know, another way to think about that is if, a, if there was some development that wanted to fill within the floodplain, that can be allowed. They need to, you know, build up their site so they're two feet above the flood elevation, but they could be allowed to fill within the floodplain so long as it's in the flood fringe and not in the floodway. And that doesn't impact 
the flood elevations for anybody else. Um, the other option, and this is what EOR used for most of their modeling is unsteady modeling. And when you do that, the, you know, you're using a flow rate that varies over time. Kind of like the, the rainstorm, the flow increases up to a peak and then it subsides as, you know, the rain trails off and the stream flow trails on. Um, you can consider significant uh, storage areas within the system, similar to the way we look at a regular old uh, detention basin. You know, a big slug of stormwater can come into the basin and it's held back to a certain extent and released more slowly over a longer period of time. Generally, this modeling method is going to reduce the flow rates and, and hence it's going to reduce the flood elevations. You know, so we have these maps that EOR produced, which are largely based on this unsteady modeling. And the easiest way to think about this is if we ask them to, uh, or if we end up deciding to go with a steady model where we're not considering these storage areas, downstream and possibly upstream, flood elevations are going to go up from what you know, we're showing on these 2018 maps. Um, the trade-off is that you cannot fill within the uh, flood fringe as easily. So this third picture kind of represents the difference. The floodway and the flood fringe are no longer classified as such. And kind of the whole thing is classified as a flood storage district. And somebody could conceivably still fill in the floodplain so long as they also cut within the floodplain to provide an equal volume of, of storage. And it's called compensatory storage. You know, and it's not so easily done. I mean, I guess is the... Uh, the upshot of this. And the concern is with already developed lands that are now shown to be in the floodplain or specifically in the flood storage district on these 2018 maps, it's going to kind of wreak havoc for them because it'd be difficult for them to even try to regrade the site to, to protect themselves from flooding, you know, like they couldn't build a levee on the downstream side of their site. Um, let me just show you an example of the flood mapping. So these are our current flood maps and it, if anybody wants more of this information, I can get it to them. Um, these areas that are shown as cross-hatched are what EOR has identified as, as flood storage districts, you know, and we, we would enforce this through zoning, you know, all of these requirements about you can't place fill within this flood storage district. These areas that are just cross-hatched or hatched diagonally are just regular old floodway, flood fringe kind of things. You know, and the impacts up by Confluence Pond are probably not as great as they are when we move south of Highway 14 and start looking at South Pond and Esser Pond. In all these areas they have outlined is as flood storage. Eric, why don't you just put out a couple of landmarks there on that screen so people know where they are? If, if yeah, sure. Questions. So this is Esser Pond. This is, there's a Starbucks here, Five Guys Burgers. I think this is Fairfield Inn. This is Greenway Boulevard right here. <clears throat> you 
you know, Thanks. so what we're really, this is what we're trying to get a handle on with the second part of EOR's contract amendment is that I want them to try to remodel some of these things with and without the floodplain storage being accounted for so we can really analyze the impacts. You know, so we could take this development out of the flood storage district, flood, flood elevations would rise, you know, a certain amount immediately downstream as the South Fork passes through here and even in South Pond. <clears throat> you know, obviously this will be, a, some people aren't gonna be happy no matter how we do this, but I think this is the, the best way to come up with, uh, you know, an equitable plan and something that we can easily explain to people, non-technical people about how we're moving forward with this. You know, EOR has already made some of these judgments on their own, you know, just based on their expertise. They know that if we got rid of a lot of this flood storage area here, it's, it's going to make a difference downstream. And same thing with South Pond. This is the co-op site. This is Pleasant View Road right here, Market Street. A lot of this co-op site is currently within this flood storage district. You know, what, what ramifications does that have for them? It's going to restrict development on their site. When, when these, Eric, when these maps were made, the modeling, I believe, accounted for the build, you know, even though we show water on top of buildings here, the modeling accounted for buildings in whatever footprint that building took up, that water was essentially accounted for elsewhere, right? It wasn't, it wasn't assumed there's no building there. Is that correct? I am not sure about that, Jim, to be honest with you. I've, I've uh, wondered that myself, but I haven't asked that of EOR directly. I think normally that's what they would do, but that'd be a question to ask. But where I'm going with that is, could the districts, when you start cutting out these areas to see what kind of impact they have by uh, re removing some areas from this district, if we just remove the, not the whole parcel, but the developed portion, by that I mean with a building footprint and maybe some wiggle room around it, you know, in other words, if, they, if there's a parking lot in uh, on the eastern half of that co-op area, as long as, the as long as the parking lot elevation doesn't change, they can, they can uh, in the district, they could repave the parking lot if they keep the same elevation, right? They could lower the parking lot if they wanted to for some reason. If they wanted to they lower it and and add to another part of the parcel, they could do that then, right? Yeah, they could. So it's not an all or nothing thing. I'm trying to, I'm, I'm wondering. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, the only real restriction on the compensatory storage is that it's up above mm -hmm. the normal elevation. So up above the, you know, base flow or maybe ordinary high water mark. Also. Yeah. But the examples uh, do we have of the, to... so, go ahead, sorry. Go ahead. Well, what decision do we have to make today? Is it just to, uh, just for the contract or do we have to make the decision on, on this particular issue? Yeah, I'm just trying to summarize for the folks who are, you know, totally walking into this completely unfamiliar with what on earth we're okay, got it. Yeah. About. But right now, I'm just trying to support EOR's contract amendment to go a little bit farther. Yeah, I, and I agree with it. And I, you know, this, this could, uh, climate's changing. We're gonna get more water. Uh, we, we have to really think this through and get the best modeling we can get. Mm -hmm. And then we can deal with the political part later, but uh, I, I, I certainly support this. You know, and the, I'll, you guys may still be lost. Um, 
here is what is currently on the FEMA maps. And pheasant branch, the main stem is right here. Here's where it crosses underneath Century. And this is about where our, our new flood study ends. Whoops, whoops. This is Confluence Pond, where it talks about this loamer. This is the airport. Notice that this area is currently a flood storage district. The South Fork comes into Confluence Pond down towards Highway 14. It heads west and then it crosses underneath the tracks. And here is that same South Pond and Esser Pond. And notice that this is not uh, FEMA mapped currently. You know, and that's kind of the other big decision point we have, but that's nothing we need to solve tonight Today. either. Eric, go ahead. Eric, can you explain on the map that you're showing? So the diagonal stripes indicate what are currently con actually designated at, as flood storage districts? Yeah. Yes, they're either storage districts or they're floodways. Okay, well, and that's why I'm asking because the maps that we have from EOR show that same pattern is uh, in the legend. It says it's the 100 year floodway. And yeah. my question, my question was going to be looking at the 18 panels that they have, uh, or, you know, that are in the packet. So their proposal is that anything that's crosshatched could be a flood storage district, correct? That's correct. And why would some of the um, hundred year floodways upstream not be proposed as a potential flood storage district? Is what I'm wondering. Well, it's at this point they've they've kind of made that executive decision, and it's really just based on how much storage is there in this little spot. How much does it matter? Is it impactful? And so they've already judged what they think is impactful or not, and what this next round of modeling would give us is kind of more. Uh, <clears throat> more uh, data, more ammunition to be able to say, if we take away this piece of a flood storage district, it raises the, the flood elevation by two inches, by six inches uh, in this spot. Did, um, did I answer that well enough, Lisa? I think so. I'm still trying to to wrap my mind around what I know what's being asked of us tonight and that is to um, approve the amendment to their agreement but I'm thinking ahead to especially the conversation about like where the Starbucks and the burger places and stuff what are, are we proposing or are we thinking about um, designated designating flood storage districts that would then have an impact on current tenants or only or land, current landowners or only future development in those areas? Well, <clears throat> that is part of the question, yeah. I mean, in a, in, in a sense, it makes sense to me to, to kind of exempt an existing development if right. the impacts downstream aren't too great. Um, mm -hmm. and, and that's the work that EOR will help provide some uh, perspective on right yeah and then we can you know we'll go through this committee and then we'll have to start a larger discussion with uh, with planning and with council eventually uh, before we you know actually move to to get these maps approved but you know i i guess the point is we have a lot of flexibility in, in how we can draw these lines and that's good and bad because somebody's going to feel like they've been, uh, you know, left out of the conversation or hung out to dry or however I, I can phrase that. But that's an issue of the future, right? We just we need to get better information, and then we can right. we'll have to tackle that bigger question later when we get that information. I mean, this is critical, critical study. We need to do it. 
Yeah, the, the, I mean, the concern I have right now to be clear about it is that area down by the Five Guys, Starbucks, uh, uh, Marriott, or Fair Fairfield. Right now, there's no um, federal regulation on them filling or building up that land in the parking lots or expanding the building footprint, things like that, which would take away flood storage area. But they are not regulated because they're not, they're not in a FEMA flood zone right now. That's true. And we have not adopted these maps into our ordinance or anything right. like that. So, right. so here's, let me show you something else. Here we is want, the, we'd like to find some way to prevent exacerbating the problem by right now. We don't have that mechanism. Right. Right. So this is the local map that we've been using for floodplain in this area or the best I can find that represents it which is kind of another issue but this this dashed line around Esser Pond is what's what the city is currently using to regulate floodplain development you know so here is five guys and Fairfield Inn and the Starbucks mm -hmm. And flooding in the South Fork itself is confined to the channel. And it's also pretty much confined to, you know, the conservancy land that we own around uh, South Pond right here. So we know this is, you know, no longer a good map. Things have changed. Rainfalls increased, et cetera. So we, we need a motion, right, to uh, do this extra work. So we haven't made that motion yet, right? So someone want to make that motion that we... Uh, yeah, I'll move okay. to accept the amendment uh, for EOR to do this extra work. And, and I don't know, some kind of caveat, Eric, I'd like you to have you know, a discussion with Steve Gaffiel about how he wants to cookie cutter these districts up and not just necessarily follow property boundaries, you know, use some collaborative work with you to decide where you're going to uh, cut these areas out. Oh, yeah, yeah, that'll definitely be happening. Um, you know, and with these, part of this is, is additional mitigation scenarios. I've I've already been sharing some background data and, and you know, bridge plans and, and things like that with you. Okay. Um, okay, so uh, we have a motion. I'll, I'll second the motion. Okay, any more discussion? This is very important. And so I, but obviously the big question will come after we get this information. So, yeah. okay, so we have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? Okay. I did have one question. I wondered, Eric, would you be able to quickly review the, I think the there was one page that made it into the second packet uh, showing the benefits, the pros and cons of two different options working or going through FEMA and not. Is this what I'm showing right now, Lisa? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Warren, uh, these were Warren notes, Warren's notes from the meeting and then I, uh, cleaned it up a little bit. Um, and he's really talking almost strictly about whether or not we should advance with a FEMA process. Uh, so like Jim pointed out, we're, we're regulating the floodplain in the non-FEMA mapped areas just through our local ordinance which we would be doing anyways, uh, you know, the city is the administrative authority to manage all this stuff. So we have the, in our ordinance, we have the FEMA maps called out where they're applicable. And then we have some more local maps that we're using in other areas. Uh, it's all outdated and needs to be replaced. Yeah. Okay. You know, so 
if somebody comes through with a development proposal, then it will be looked at by city staff and we'll find it and say, oh, you know, you're, you're in the floodplain. If a site was already developed and the, the owner had a mortgage through a bank and he was paying for flood insurance uh, or not, and he just transferred or sold the property, you know, there's nothing, you know, usually the banker will pick up on a floodplain problem, you know, if the guy has a loan. And if there's no uh, FEMA map, that won't be found, you know. Another question I had was what rates are they paying? And the DNR kind of reassured us that even if we had a, a local map that was more restrictive or more uh, conservative with where the floodplain was, you know, a, a property owner would still be paying an insurance rate through, you know, the flood insurance program that reflected what the FEMA map said. Mm -hmm. you know, I, I think we would still have to pass that through city legal to see if they think we're introducing some kind of a liability. If I was an insurer, you know, I don't know if I'd be okay with that. If you understand what I'm saying. Yeah. 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 Like if this property was all of a sudden in our floodplain, but he was buying insurance through the national program that showed he was not in the floodplain. What happens if he floods? But this is a decision of the future, right? So right now we're just asking for better data right so it is i mean it just to try to finish answering what lisa asked um we don't necessarily have to pay fema fees the first time through we would not if we wanted to do a mitigation project then later on that change these maps again we would have to pay FEMA review fees, uh, you know, which probably eight, ten, fifteen thousand dollars, and we'd have to pay the consultant. Obviously, the FEMA process takes a really long time. We're going to go through DNR uh, first, and regardless. So, you know, I, I think we can kind of worry about this later my recommendation would be to do the fema mappings certainly um, i think it's confusing and kind of disjointed not to do it that way and i'm worried mm -hmm. about things slipping through the cracks i'm worried about when i leave uh, this might not get the kind of attention that, that we would want it to But again, we don't have to. That's decide. a future decision, but that's, yeah, okay. Okay, thank you for that, Eric. And just, just one more question. We could, for the FEMA fee, because I, I, it does sound like option one um, sounds like the better option to me. Um, could we use the, I, I see we're funding the EOR agreement through the TID3 funding. Could we use that same fun, source of funding for um, the FEMA fees? I think so. I can't promise you 100%, but I, yeah, I think so. Um, Mike Davis, our recently retired administrator, uh, told me several times that basically all things stormwater were TID eligible. Okay, thanks. But we're not making this decision tonight, right? No. No, oh, right. So, so, so there's just right now the motion is just to do the <clears throat> additional work. Uh, is so there any more discussion? We're not choosing between option one or option two tonight. No. Is that what you're saying? Right. right. No. And I, Jim, you made the motion. Um, do you intend it consistent with? this language recommend approval of the contract amendment. yeah to send to the finance committee and common council for approval right correct okay okay 
Eric, can you bring up the um, actual agreement on the yes. screen? I had on, for further discussion, I had one additional minor change and that is on page 26, it's numbered page 26, I think. I might be looking at an earlier one. Anyway, the reference to Maury Airport at the top of the next page, I think it is. I'd like to change that to Middleton Municipal Airport because that is the actual name. You got that, yeah, it makes sense. Yep. You consider that just friendly, uh, yeah. Yep. Friendly correction there. Okay, uh, all, all in favor, let's take a vote then. All in favor uh, of doing asking for this additional work or funding this additional work, say aye. 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 Uh, any opposed? Same sign. Any abstentions? Okay, so it's approved. Okay. Item seven, Ken. Okay. Do you want me to? Introduce? Yeah, why don't you go ahead and give us some background on that? Okay, so uh, the Sustainability Committee. Uh, forwarded to us a memo and a, a draft uh, sustainable city plan update uh, for review and comment. I read it, I did not have any comments. I, you know, it's, it's solid and I, I guess I'll say kind of vague or, you know, non-specific, which is fine. Um, <laughs> Lisa, are you on that uh, group? I am, and act actually I was going to suggest the um, Sustainability Committee will be hosting a session at the library tomorrow night at 6.30, just to go through, you know, it, Eric's right, it's, it's a short plan. We wrote it intentionally to be um, readable by any member of the public who wants to understand what the city is doing to try to be more sustainable um, and uh, how they can help. And we, we took the, actions in the plan, I think with the exception of one or two, all the actions that we're proposing are from the city's 2021 comprehensive plan that council approved a year ago. Um, so our vision for the sustainable city plan is to uh, not create additional work for staff. They already have a huge long list of things to do, but we went through the comprehensive plan and pulled out the items that relate specifically to energy um, reducing our energy usage and making the shift to uh, clean renewable sources of energy because the city does have a policy of achieving 100% renewable energy for all our community energy needs, not just city buildings or city uh, vehicles, but the whole community. 100% by the year 2050. So we pulled out what we felt were the um, item, the actions in the comp plan that would help us get to um, the 2030 milestones in uh, the city's policy. Uh, but we did have a couple of recommendations from members for actions that came from um, either land use or, well, there's no water section of the comp plan, but they were it related to uh, water and land use. And so for that reason, when we put the call out for comments from the various committees, commissions, and boards, we wanted to make sure that we heard from um, anybody who's, uh, who relates to um, water and land use. So for instance, Conservancy Lands and Water Resources Management Commission. Um, note that this, this plan, of course, you know, it's up to council to decide what to fund. Um, we know we don't have the staff or the budget right now to do everything that we're proposing, but this is uh, a three-year plan and our, our intention is to update it after the second full year, um, following uh, the same process we used this time and keeping our focus on uh, trying to mitigate the damage of climate change um, by making the shift to clean renewable energy. 
Um, there is this open meeting tomorrow night at the library where we'll walk through um, high level what's in the plan and ask some questions of the public. Um, if you can't make it to the library, there's another session on Monday, also at 6.30 on Zoom. Um, and the information for accessing that Zoom meeting is on the sustainable um, or the sustainability website through the city's website. Um, the plan is also there and you'll find a link to a survey that we've set up using Polco. Um, very short survey. I think there are 11 questions and some of them are things like, do you live in Middleton? So a <laughs> um, lot of open-ended op opportunity to put, provide open-ended comments. Um, so I encourage everybody to read through the plan. Uh, like I said, it's only 16 pages, unlike many of our city plans, which are you know, writ written by consultants. We, we, and, you know, some of us have been consultants or done that type of work in the, in the past. We weren't getting paid this time. So, so it's a much shorter document. And uh, I hope you'll weigh in with your comments uh, by the end of June, June 30th is last day to submit comments. And you can do it either through the Polco uh, survey or you can email Kelly Hilliard and her information is in the memo that accompanied this document. Uh, okay, any, uh, any discussion? Uh, one thing I, I read that sentence, uh, Middleton, keeps harmful substance out of that, that's fine, but neither existing nor new development is vulnerable to flooding. Vulnerable to flooding, that's, that's kind of a um, wishy-washy term. So, but that, you know, I don't know that that matters. Uh, I don't know, you know, it's not clear what that means exactly. Uh, you know, well, that the vulnerability doesn't change or that it gets, because um, it would be better if it said that, that you know, the vulnerability, existing vulnerability uh, is not gonna, uh, and uh, get worse. Right. Uh, well, keep in mind that all the vision statements are, they're describing what we hope the city will be in 10 years. So if we, if we um, take action to bring about that vision, that's what we will achieve in 10 years. But if you have a suggestion for a specific word change, that's, again, all comments are welcome. We want to hear from um, the committees, commissions, and boards, and from the people. Okay, anybody else concerned about that? That's uh, one yeah, I mean, the, if the word was Middleton strives to avoid existing in the development being vulnerable to flooding, that certainly is. That's a better sentence, yeah. Is understandable. Um, can, I, can I just say that we we had a discussion about whether to say strives in multiple places in this. Um, I know plan. it's weaker. Yeah, <laughs> I was going to say that's why we we felt like you know we needed to be bold because again this this is a a water section and you'll see if you read the plan that we have various chapters but some of those chapters don't have any actions associated with them because we're looking at a three year time period and we can't we can't do it all. Um, and, and so we, we decided we wanted to be bold and not say we'll strive to do it, but actually say we'll do it. Um, we'd rather, we'd rather assess our progress and be honest and say we didn't do it, rather than be able to say, well, we tried, you know, um, we said we'd strive for it and check that off, we did it, you know? So we're, we're trying to hold ourselves super accountable um, yeah. and, and really make it action oriented. But I, I, I take your point, I, I totally understand. You're, you're just, you know, and I understand it. I understand the, your point also, uh, Lisa, but you know, we're set up here for a moving target because there will be flooding. I, I can guarantee you there will be flooding. Yeah, there will be flooding. <laughs> there will be, no matter what we do. Um, somebody will get, you know, I understand that the desire to be uh, bold, um, but that's just the hydrologist in me speaking. Um, I do want to comment on uh, some of the bolts on the next page. And I don't know, if, I suppose we should be writing these to Eric as comments, but the first bullet revised zoning ordinances and relevant code to promote reduction in pervious surface. Well, I hope the current zoning rewrite that's going on right now 
And that's why I asked you the question earlier, Eric, I hope there was involvement or will be involvement is that your input or our input would come up with ways to reduce imperviousness, street width, building size, parking lot requirements, all those things that go into imperviousness in you know a nuts and bolts type ordinance or zoning code to, to allow for smaller impervious footprints along with certain types of development. Um, we haven't seen the draft yet, I understand that, but I hope there's already been given deep thought to come up with ways to do that. Yeah, I agree, that's a, that's a really critical bullet. <laughs> And um, <clears throat> we need to work at that, obviously. Okay, any other discussion? So what do you need from us, Eric? Uh, we need a motion on this or? No. Um, so I've got two comments that I can forward it to sustainability committee. To, okay. And if nobody else wants to add any, I suppose, I would like to add just one more comment. Um, I really like the way that this is laid out and with the um, thinking about the three-year time frame for these actions. And so that makes a lot of sense. They're about water quantity moving across the landscape. But a lot of the vision has a lot to do, is also has to do with water quality. And those two things are intertwined. And so if there is a way to consider um, how these changes in water quantity and these improvements might also um, begin study of how that's going to be changing water quality in the water bodies that were identified higher up, that would perhaps also be an improvement. It's not gonna solve it right now, but trying to understand how those two things are interlinked might possibly be another bullet point. Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay, that's a good point. Uh, okay, any, uh, any other discussion on this? Okay, hearing none, uh, we don't have to take any action then, right? Uh, so no, I, I'll, I will forward those three comments. And I suppose if there. anybody comes up with some later, they can use the other avenues that uh, Lisa described. Yeah, I think those last two, that bullet on the, uh, maximizing uh, infiltration and evapotranspiration, I'm all for that. And that's, I think that's really important. Uh, so I'm glad to see that's there. Okay, so where are we on the, is that our last item or we have? Uh, we just have items for July, if somebody's got something that I'm okay. aware of. Any other uh, issues we wanna cover in the next meeting? That might yeah, take more preparation. The, the floodplain mapping work from EOR, that's gonna be a couple of months away at least, right, Eric? Yeah, probably. Yeah. We might have the zoning ordinance next month. Okay. Okay. I'll hold my breath. <laughs> we All might. Right. We might also have. I don't. I don't know what the status is of the um, strategic plan. I'm on the advisory committee, but we're not really in the loop. Um, Eric, do you know when that strategic plan will be out? Because that too will, I'm sure, be um, forwarded to all the committees, commissions, and boards for comment. I don't know. I don't know. I will check. Okay, so uh, seems like we've covered all the issues. So is there a motion to adjourn? I'll make that motion, this is Lisa. Second. Uh, second, any discussion on hearing none? Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, meeting adjourned. Thank you all. Thank you. Nice to see you all. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Take care.